The Cleveland Circle is complete. If you are listening on iHeartRadio from outside Ohio, tell me where you do that. You can leave us messages there as well. If you're watching the show live today at alancoxer.com, uh, thank you to... Thank you to... <laughs> <laughs> thank you to Sneven Harborhaven. Sneven. Sneven, yeah. Sneven Harborhaven. Thank you so much. Of course, we'll get to the Bill Squire Friday Get Down a little bit later on. That's how we begin... The weekend officially around these parts. Mm -hmm. It's a rare Friday that Mary gets to see it live and in blazing color because sometimes Bill can get pretty red doing it. Do you want me to be closer to you when I do it? You I want don't. to, like, I'll do it over on your mic? No. That'd be I would like the two of you, I would, I would like the two of you to be in the same camera frame when you do it. I don't want to do that. We can figure that out. Come right? over here, Mary. Be anywhere near be him. Right. He needs to be right next to me. I don't want to. And I'll do it like, I'm close enough. like we're doing a duet. I'm close enough to you right here. Like we're singing endless love. Never going to happen. <laughs> I mean, listen, if it's good enough yeah. for uh, countless bands, you know, Springsteen and Little Steven and Keith and Mick yelling on two sides of the same mic, all of a sudden it's not good enough for the two of you? Hey, I'm saying. I know you're on me. board. I'm, I'm on board. I'm better than Mary's, that. Mary's not. I'm better There's than Rolling Stones. You. Now, which one of you will be Lionel Richie? And which one of you will be Diana Ross? I'll, I'll be, be lying in my bed because I got to leave early. Get it? <laughs> get it, Lionel? I thought you had family dinner tonight. I have to get away from this. So. You have to get away from this. From that, from mm. the Friday get down. Ah. Uh, then your weekend will be started. My weekend already started. I got to tell you, as supportive as Bill has always been of you, the most. Oh, it seems please. the most. Please. I mean, a lot of people, a lot of people are saying uh, it seems a little bit asymmetrical that you're not equally as supportive of him. He, didn't, he didn't ask for much. I Listen. bought both of your albums, Hillbilly Bobby Boy and, <laughs> <laughs> and um, everything Family is Matters. in line with yeah. whatever happens. The other one. Yeah, everything happens for a reason. So I, I, all I'm asking you is to do one Friday get down where we share a mic. Listen, there is camera. a virgin pina colada waiting for me at the Dave and Buster's. <laughs> It'll be there. So It'll be I there. A the virgin one thing pina not gonna colada. Run out of oh is boy. Pina colada mix. <laughs> so I've got a really big Friday night planned, yep. and I can't, I can't have my energy dampened. Oh, Before good news. I it's go not going to dampen it. It's going to get you hyped up for that virgin pina colada to the point where you're going to be like, hey, now I'm ready to play. Some, the, wait, also, does that count as gambling playing those arcade games? No. <laughs> <laughs> it does not. There's no promise of winning. You haven't banned yourself from skee ball? <laughs> not yet, no. <laughs> She's I like, I got that, that bad. 6,200 tickets. Yes. <laughs> Sprinkle some of your dad's ashes <laughs> <laughs> yeah. in the claw machine. Right, I should. Like, actually. if you're playing that quarter game where it's pushing them off the edge, that's I'm basically not playing gambling. that one. This is like the, they take the cards. It's not even fun anymore. So what's your game of choice when you're over there? When I, okay, my favorite game at any arcade is the one that's a big circle with the dome over top, and it's got the lights that go around in a circle, and you have to stop the light on the certain, at the certain point, and then you okay. win the jackpot. That's so, my favorite so, so you're not doing a video game of any kind. You're doing a reasonable facsimile of a gambling situation. I like the games you win tickets for, yes. Yeah. But I no, because That's I like ski ball. But, but don't you win tickets on all of them or no? no. The video games. No. You, okay. The racing no, games and like the, Park, yeah, the shooting games and the racing games, you don't win any tickets on. And I have tried those are Brian and Blake's favorite. Those are the only you, they would play those the whole time. But I've tried to explain to Blake every single time. She's seven. Every time we go, I say, if you're gonna spend all of your time on the racing games, which is fine, you're not gonna get any prizes. And mm -hmm. you have to understand that. And she'll do it. And then we'll be like, all right, we got a half hour left. And she has literally no tickets. And she's like, well, I'm supposed to get a prize. I'm like, I told you, you wanted to play the shoot 'em up game for an hour, which right. is, again, fine. Don't she's, come she's, she's hunkered down on Duck Hunt. Her and Brian play duck like the Hunt. The zombie shoot 'em games. Oh, yeah. That's those two to a T. They're like the zombie shoot 'em up games. Oh, I'm really bad at the driving games, but we'll, I'll play. To be part of the family. Well, because you're really bad at driving in real life. I right? know. So, yeah. Make it harder. Alan, like skiball. Alan like Bill skiball. should do the get down from Mary's lap. How do you feel about that? No. Crush her. Yeah, he'll crush my legs. Those are reinforced chairs. 
My legs yeah, aren't okay. reinforced. Oh. Regular old bone, baby. And I'm lactose intolerant. There ain't a bit of yeah. vitamin D in here. She, she ain't got no cows. Come on. <laughs> She's calcium deficient. Oh, God. Who sent me She's the lactose? osteoporosis <laughs> ready. Who sent me the lactose intolerant clip? Did you send me that pound cake or somebody just tagged me in it? The kid, who I didn't see the kid who thinks that it's God, where was that? Maybe I did, somebody might have DM'd me and I didn't send it to myself. It's what I'll normally do, but somebody said it was. They go, "Is this pound cake?" Um, lactose in Toronto. No, it was a guy. He thought it was lactose in Toronto or something. Mm -hmm. and the guy swore that it was. Come it, on, at least be logical about it. My, yeah, my be favorite meme that's been going around is uh, someone is hitting on a girl and he says. You have me taking a bath, and they're like, "What? What? You have me taking a bath?" And they, they're like, "Do you mean taking a back?" <laughs> taking a bath. <laughs> taking a I was really taking a bath by your comments earlier. You're so dirty. You had me taking a bath. Mm -hmm. No, you. That is only me. You can leave us messages. We've always got the Alan Cox Show after hours line up there for you. It is a 216-986-8903 to drop a voicemail. So you guys talking about gold bars for some reason. I'm, I'm driving quite a bit today, so I had all this free time to think. I'm talking about gold bars at Costco. If you were able to travel back in time, or even forward in time for that matter, back would be the bigger problem. Let me start over. If you're going back in time, how would you pay for things? You couldn't take current money with you that was dated any time before uh, you're going back in time. So let's say you go back in time to the 1950s. You can't take a bunch of money with you because the money's changed in appearance. So you've got that problem. Then you can't, obviously, even if you went back a few years, I doubt that you could use a current credit card 10 years ago. It wouldn't work. So you'd have to take something with you like gold bars. So maybe Costco is secretly uh, showing us that time travel is possible because all these time travelers need gold bars to take back in time with them. You know, you take a few gold bars back with you, along with some records of uh, sporting events that you can gamble on that you know the uh, outcome of. So you take your gold, you cash it in, you go gamble. Seems like the logical choice. So I think really that Costco is on the forefront of uh, time travel. That's just my thought. Um, anyway, bye. <laughs> so Matt's take on this is that Costco is somehow endorsing, well, they figured out a wormhole. I mean, as far as... And that means you're time traveling back to the future style, not yeah, like, Terminator style, because Terminator style, you are naked. So yeah, you're you can't more really like, take you're anything more like with Biff you. with the almanac. Yeah. I mean, I followed his logic. Maybe I did, too, just, and that terrifies I'm me. just specifying the kind of time travel that he's doing. I understand the logic completely, but I'm just saying... Unless you're putting the gold bars up your butt to do the Terminator time travel. Did the Terminator put gold bars in his ass? Nobody no, knows. I'm saying you have to... In you Terminator, want me to sit you, next to this guy. When you travel no, back in time... No, I want you to sit under this guy. <laughs> when you travel back in time in Terminator, it was always... They'd always show up naked. Yes. Why? Because they wanted to show Arnold Schwarzenegger. <laughs> 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 they just hadn't figured out how to transport cloth. Yeah. They can... It burns off or something. I don't know. <laughs> they never explained it. Hotter than a grasshopper's belly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Every other time travel movie, the premise was always, we can send stuff. We just haven't figured out how to send organic matter, right? The Terminator, either willingly or unwillingly, they go, it's the opposite. We figured out how to send full bodies People, their organs, everything mm -hmm. shows up on the other side the way it's supposed to. And just, cyborgs. Just, yeah. say, wasn't yeah. he a robot? Yes, mm -hmm. just can't figure out inanimate material. Just can't figure out cloth. Uh, Didn't even show up wearing skivvies. They wanted to showcase Schwarzenegger's we got physique. All those, we got all those cupcakes out there from... There's only one left. ...the new movie that's going to be on Prime that's a time travel movie where the girl goes back in time and sees her mom being a party animal and Totally stuff. killer. Yeah. It's a good movie. You've, seen, you've watched it already? Yeah, they got, I got a screener about it. Oh, it looks good. It looks funny. Yeah, they had somebody here earlier, like, shooting a bunch of video with people, and he oh, had a mask okay. on and a plastic knife with blood in it, and yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the girl in that, when she was, she was the daughter on Mad Men back in the day when she was a little girl. Her name's Kiernan Shipka. 
she was Don Draper's daughter. She was like seven years old, but Mad Men was, you know, you forget that show was like 15, 20 years ago. But, uh, yeah. Is that on Prime now? I think it just, I think it starts this weekend. Yeah. Week? I didn't realize they had pushed back Craven the Hunter. That was originally going to drop today, too. And I was finally like, I haven't seen one promo for that movie. And they pushed it all the way to next August. Oh, okay. But. I think I got a couple movies in me this weekend. I'm solo this weekend, so I think right. I got a couple of movies. Will come in to me. Dave and Buster's? You can have I a real pina colada. Do not. We'll put rum in it. Isn't a virgin pina colada just an, a slushy? Essentially, but it tastes like coconut. Like an icy or a, something from 7 Eleven? Tastes like coconuts and pineapples. Well, yeah, that's pina colada, yeah. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> coconuts and pineapples. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you like coconuts and pineapples? Apples. I'm probably going to. And playing games at Dave and Buster's. Meet me at the ski ball. <laughs> You know, I heard through the grapevine that when I play that little uh, DJ Jake C composition with me teaching Mary how to play the drums, the pound cake has referred to you as a little drummer bitch. What? <laughs> yeah, I've heard through the grapevine that that's what he said. That little how drummer he... bitch. What? Why would you say that? His Isn't pettiness, that's why he's my chief petty officer. His pettiness knows no bounds. And what was the, how did that song go, pound cake? And is that what the, song is that? Is that the little drummer bitch? That's little drummer bitch. <laughs> no, that's little drummer bitch. Oh, he's taking his liberties with it. Yeah, yeah that's, that's my song. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's, Unbelievable! You're it's not changed every time he's done it. It's gonna sound. I have a feeling it's gonna sound very different when we wake up early on Sunday morning and do it. On <laughs> Come the all the way Cox. in here yeah. to do it. Yep, I bet it will too. But I like that he's. I like that he's um, working out his material. I'm try and I'm driving all the way back from Canton to do it. So oh. on Sunday morning, you got to come from Canton. Uh, act, I what have a, a sacrifice! Wow, Cody. I have a wedding in. Don't be Canton. too reliable. <laughs> wow. I have a wedding in Canton, and then I'm gonna spend all day after I get done with the Weekend Cox at uh, the Stan Hewitt Festival. Like, there's like a, a fall festival there where you can buy, like. Wait. So stuff. you're you're you have a wedding on Saturday in Canton, and you're staying there overnight. Not at the wedding, but I have I have friends. But in town, uh, I'm going back to Akron. Yeah. Okay. Hmm. A lot of driving. And then driving all the way here on Sunday morning to do Week in Cox, and then going back for the Stan Smith Sneaker Festival. Stan, what is, Stan oh, Hewitt oh, Art I would Festival. Go to that. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Isn't that where like John Lithgow grew up or something? Didn't he live in the Stan Hewitt Hall? People get married there. Yeah. That's all I know. All I right. got lost in there one time. That's the only. I well, they have a lot of no, aren't don't they pride themselves on their nooks and crannies, just like you do. Yeah, they have a you super like passageway. Pete and colonics. You're thinking of uh, Bill Squire at the Agora on December the twenty second. December twenty second. What I say? I don't know. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I said December 22nd. <laughs> AgoraCleveland.com or yeah, BillSquire.com. Yeah. He just likes the word December, so yeah. any chance yeah, he gets I'm to repeat it, we're gonna throw say. it in. You're, so that's a lot of driving around, Cody. Are you MC weddings or you're just attending one? Uh, MC weddings. MC weddings, yeah. So I might as well kill two birds with one stone since I'm down there. Might as well stay down there. Right. Yeah, I understand. That. I'm going to go past the mall that I used to work. <laughs> and are you going to flip them off or just wave at them when you go by? Well, this oh, it's not God the mall's fault. You. I don't even think the store is still there. It was Hollister, but I don't even think that's still there. And that was in Akron? Uh, Canton. It was built in Village. Oh, it was? Yeah. So I would drive from Akron to Canton like two or three days a week whenever they needed me because I was on call. I think I hated on calls with, <laughs> no, oh, my God, with the days where I wanted to retail get drunk, work. Whenever I, the days I wanted to get drunk the most, the days that we had the best parties. It was it, so annoying. And they're like, so we are going to need you to come in. I'm like, mm, you had to call in. It. If you're you're scheduled on call from 4 to close, 4 p.m. to close, like till 10, you had to call in at 2 p.m. You were like, fingers yes, crossed. I don't have Because we, we did that you. when I was waiting tables. They oh, were like, okay, you're on call. And I'd be like, I don't want to work today. And I'd just be like, please. They were like, yeah, we need you to come in. I'm like, God damn it. Mm -hmm. So close to the day off. So close. Mm -hmm. But then you're like, you spend the whole first part of the day like annoyed. Yeah. Because yeah. yeah. you you're like, that. I can't really do anything because I don't know if I have to go to work or not. Ugh, the worst. Yep. Call in at 2.30. We'll see if we need you. Yeah, why don't you just go ahead and come in, and you know what? If it stays slow, we'll cut you at 6. I'm like, just don't bring me in. Yeah, you don't. can't make it through these two hours without somebody in the dressing room? Get out of here. Boy, I bet they don't do that anymore. These places have a hard enough time keeping people, you know, they're like putting as oh, few people. there's still lots of places that do that. Are there? Yeah. On call? Yeah. You walk in any store now, they don't have enough people working. 
If they had somebody on call, they'd call them in every time. Well, I feel, not, I feel not, like they're not was, scheduling I'm people for on call more, anymore. More in restaurants than, uh, well, well, like retail. But actually, I don't think I ever had an on call. Well, you kind of had job. like a specific shift that you'd always work though. Yeah, I was like one of two morning bartenders. Yeah. Nobody was really. Tr- Fighting to work Monday morning. <laughs> well, and also Get their breakfast. Everybody uh, else is on call because, like, we don't know if Mary's going to show up. Oh today. no, I have <laughs> never ever called off. Oh, really? I would show up hammered, but I would and come she was to there. work. Hey. That was the thing. So that's what's really. Funny. That was it. Was good viral marketing when the bartenders drunk. They're like, "Whoa, I want to drink here." Well, it's eight thirty. The one time I actually I was very sick and I called off. And when I came back in the next day, someone was giving me crap. They're like, "Oh, you were out Sunday night. You called off because you were hungover." And my manager was like, "Mary has showed up." Fully drunk multiple times. Like, I don't believe it. I think she was actually sick. And I'm like, yeah, I'll come here. <laughs> Still kind of on coke a little bit. <laughs> but I'll do Alan Doc Brown had a suitcase full of cash organized by the appropriate heirs. Much better method than gold bars in Marty McFly's ass. Well, All right, that, fine, but not but everybody can collect that. gold bars in Marty McFly's ass is not the way you'd have to do it because in Back to the Future... You could travel with stuff. Anything that was in the car went back in time with you. And what if the, you wanted the, to put gold butts, bars? The, the gold bar butt smuggling <laughs> is for the Terminator Ain't time travel. Yep. Mm. Pay attention. Mm. God. Mm. All right. Alan, I'm a nurse, and we have to be on call. Today. Yes, I know nurses yeah, no, have to be different. on call. I was talking about pants. stupid retail jobs. Yeah, we were yeah. working. I worked at American Eagle. Pound Cake wasn't even out in front. He was an yeah. impactor. Bro. He was, he was impacting the stock room. I would get so demeaned. <laughs> like they're, they're like, get Demeaned? Your, yeah. Yeah. All right. Uh, get your ass back to the impactor room, back to the, you know, back of shop. I'm like, wow. Didn't even want you out front. But, but it wasn't the supervisor. Well, there was one supervisor that was real mean. But the other... Female supervisors were nice. There was a gay one, and then there was another gay guy there that just did not like me. And then there was another girl who had a crush on, like, my roommate. And because I was cool with them, she just made fun of me, and she would frame. She was the one that would frame me for stuff. She would put hoodies uh, where she knew the supervisor would get pissed off. Um, and then say it was me. And I was like, I didn't put, I wouldn't put a lime green hoodie with a bunch of yellow hoodies. I know the difference. And then, you know, I would get blamed for it. I'm like, is that why the guy didn't like you? He thought you were not good at your job? Or he just didn't like the cut of your gym? Probably both. I I mean, I was a seasonal employee and you do your training and then that's it. But people, the the lifers that work in retail, they know the story like the back of their hand. They're, They're the ones putting the labels and doing this and doing that. And I, my first day on the job was Black Friday, so that was like my training: Walk, tripping over leashes, dropping pants, leashes, um, yeah. kids on leashes, the kids on leashes, like oh, kids on leashes. They, yeah, I was walking through and not paying attention, and the mom yelled at me. She's like, "Hey, I'm like, I'm, you have your kid <laughs> on <the> my leash. <laughs> <laughs> Wow, I've got to take a break here. If you want to send me a text, you can do that three five one nine two. I'll have another one thousand dollars for you. Another keyword courtesy.